For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. <laughs> Lieber Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. And I live with Irma Peterson, and believe me, it's a problem. I won't say she's stupid. I'll just put it this way. I told her that fish was brain food, so for three weeks she's been on a diet of fish, fish, fish. And you know what the result is? She now has the IQ of a sardine. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, I really love her. It's just that there are times when... Uh, well, for instance, the other day I sent her to the store for a pound of drip coffee. She brought it back in a hot water bottle. <laughs> oh, well, as they say, patience is a virtue. My name is Irma Peterson, and believe me, living with Jane Stacy is quite a problem. There are things you just can't understand no matter how hard I try to educate her. Now, for instance, the other day she sent me out for a pound of drip coffee and she was so surprised when I brought it back in a hot water bottle. She doesn't stop to think that if I carried it in a paper bag it would all leak out before I could get it home. <laughs> oh, well, as they say, patience is a virus. <laughs> I may differ in points of view, but right now we have a problem in common. What is it? A complete shortage of that exquisite commodity known as men. Irma cleaned house first. She gave Al the air for a new boyfriend, but the new boyfriend is afraid of Al, so now neither of them comes around. I, on the other hand, have just quarreled with my guy, Richard Rhinelander. So, here the two of us sit without boyfriends, like two old maids. Irma. What, Jane? Honey, don't sit there like the world has come to an end just because you have no boyfriend. But, Jane, a girl is supposed to have a fellow. That's why girls put perfume on themselves. To attract men, that's known as animal instinct. <laughs> Beg pardon? Oh, what's the difference? I'm too miserable to speak. Irma, your thinking is all wrong. Many women have lived rich, full lives without men. Famous women. Name one. Well, there was a... No, she liked children too much. Let me see. Oh, I know. Florence Nightingale. That's different. She had her singing to keep her busy. <laughs> And she's just one. No, no, there are many. What about uh, Joan of Arc? She's in the movies. I'm talking about plain working girls, girls like me who get lonely at night. But we don't have to kill ourselves just because we haven't any men. Oh, Jane, you're such a child. Love is the only thing that counts. Believe me, Irma, men aren't the only things in the world. A girl can have other interests. What, for instance? Well, there's a... Um, there's a... Uh, there must be something. <laughs> Certainly! We can take up a hobby. A hobby? Yes, many women take up hobbies. Well, do you think you could find one for me? Why, sure, sure, honey. Do you have any idea what you want? Oh, uh, I'm not too particular as long as he's fairly tall and a good dancer. <laughs> <laughs> no, Irma, I said hobby, not hubby. Now, I want you to face this thing honestly. Who has made you cry almost every night? Al. And who always embarrassed you wherever you went? Al. You see what I mean? He gave you two years of misery. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, why are you crying? Well, misery loves company, and now I'm not keeping company with anybody. <laughs> Irma, don't be silly. 
Billy, you and I have been kicked around a little by the opposite sex, and I think we ought to call it quits. Show our independence. What do you mean, Jane? Well, we'll... We'll just busy ourselves with other things. We'll forget all about men for a while. Not even mention men. Right, Irma? All right. <laughs> then it's an agreement? Right. Let's shake on it. Man to man. <laughs> no, Irma, we don't even mention the word. From now on, our lives are centered around our hobbies. Uh, come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little busy bees. One with her mind on her work, and the other with a mind that doesn't work. <laughs> Why, Professor? <laughs> Excuse me, Janie. A little joke I got stung with. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, you're just the man we want to see. Irma and I want to take up a hobby. Yes, and you have so many. You play the violin, the Spanish castanets. And... Castanets? I don't play castanets. But I've heard you many times. Oh, my darling, that isn't castanets. It's just that when I sit in my room, my teeth chatter. <laughs> oh, Professor, I'm sick and tired of hearing you complain. Your room isn't that bad. Oh, no? You've never seen it. Why don't you come upstairs right now and see for yourself? Okay, let's go. And since we're looking for a hobby, we might as well make something useful. So, like... Well, maybe Irma and I can knit you a bedspread. Impossible, girls. My bed couldn't stand the extra weight. <laughs> well, here we are, girls. This is my room. Shall we go in? <laughs> All right. Everybody take two giant steps. Oh, that's a child's game. Yes, it's a child's game, but if you want to live to be an old lady, you better do it. There's a hole in the floor. <laughs> well, Professor, I can see your touches here and there. That's a nice painting you have on the wall. That is no painting. That's the lady next door. <laughs> Mrs. Horowitz, you mind if I draw the curtains? I got company. Thank you. <laughs> well, girls, how do you like it? Janie, would you mind standing sideways so Irma can come in and look? Come in, Irma. My, it's dark in here. Do you, do you mind if I raise this shade? Stop, Irma. Don't pull that. That's the wallpaper. <laughs> oh, excuse me, girls. What kind of a host am I? Let me get you some. Oh, no, 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 thanks. I, I just like a, a little cold water. Oh, well, that's easy. Open your mouth and pull the cork out of that pipe. <laughs> no, the small cork. The big one is for the shower. <laughs> seen a room like this. Uh, what period is it? Oh, early English, I think. Uh, Janie, are you familiar with the period of the English and the French colonial wars? Yes. Well, this is where they fought. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks for volunteering, girls, but unless your hobby happens to be blasting, there is nothing can be done for my room. We wanted to help you, Professor. Oh, bless you, my darlings. But be smart. If you girls want a hobby, go down to the hobby shop, and they will give you wonderful ones. Say, that's a good idea. Come on, Irma. Uh, want to walk with us, Professor? <laughs> no, thank you. Mrs. O'Reilly is coming up, and we both have a hobby. Oh, what is it? She likes to tell me how young she is, and I like to sit and count her chins. <laughs> <laughs> Run along, girls. <laughs> Well, we went to the hobby shop. And on Thursday night, I sat home and embroidered while Irma busied herself with her hobby, stuffing bird skins. <laughs> Around nine o'clock, she said, Jane, I think this hobby's too hard for me. I, I think I'm putting too much cotton in this bird skin. I wouldn't say that. Why, it looks exactly like an eagle. Do you really think so? Uh-huh. Then I'm in trouble. It's supposed to be a sparrow. <laughs> morning, we decided to look for a different hobby. But a letter in the mailbox almost broke Irma's determination to forget about men. It was from Al, that live wire with a loose connection. <laughs> and it read... Dear Chicken, roses are red, violets are blue. Like the elbows in my sleeves, 
Don't tell me we're through. <laughs> I write this poetry to you only because my heart is broken. And I want you to know that without you, I am alone and cold, like a dancer without her fan. <laughs> I am so desperate, I can't even pick up the phone and say, Hello, Joe? <laughs> so you see, chicken, I appeal to you. Don't be so headstrong. Soften up. Think it over. Remember, we always wanted to have children. And if we ain't speaking to each other, it will have a very bad psychological effect. <laughs> I am waiting by the phone to hear what you have to say. So watch your language. It's a party line. <laughs> Love, Al. That's when we decided to take up knitting. Irma, are you happy? Uh, oh, yes. Gee, I never thought a little thing like knitting could take the place of fellows. Oh, yes. Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's keen. Peachy keen. Jane, I, I, I haven't much willpower. How can I make sure I won't weaken? Well, it's easy, honey. Whenever you feel you're wavering, you just say to yourself, I am master of my mind and fate, for only the weak give in to their desires. Oh, that's easy. Well, let me hear you say it. Um... I need to master my desire because fate gave me a weak mind. <laughs> no, no, Irma, forget it. Just dismiss the thought of fellows. Oh, I already have. I never think of men. Do you, Jane? Me? Oh, why, no, no. We were silly to waste so much time with them. We could have been... Knitting. <laughs> yes, but they're all gone and forgotten. Irma, are you sure? Oh, certainly. Then why are you knitting men's socks? Uh, uh, well, they don't have to be men's socks. They can be for a woman with short legs. <laughs> Irma? Okay, Jane. Uh, Jane, you don't want to break the agreement about... No more fellows? No, no, I've, I've never been so happy. Men aren't really necessary. I just love to knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. I've got it. That wasn't fair. You tripped me, Jane. Uh, hello? Jane. Uh, Yes, Betty. What is it? Jane, you know that fellow you met New Year's Eve at my house, Gordon McLean? Yes. Well, he says he'd love to call on you tomorrow night. Are you interested? Oh, well, I'd love to. Uh, but um, there are complications. If, um, if you meet me at the beauty parlor in five minutes, we can discuss aforementioned uh, M-A-S-C-U-L-I-N-E. Goodbye. M-A-S-C-U-L-I-N-E. Oh, Jane, you're wasting your time. Mussolini is dead. <laughs> I know, honey. We're just holding services. <laughs> See you later. Knit one. Pearl one. Knit two. Pearl two. Knit... Hello? Hello? No, this isn't the YMCA. I wish it was. <laughs> well, thanks anyway. Goodbye. Knit one, pearl one, knit one, pearl two, knit... Come in. Hello, Irma. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Irma, what are you doing sitting there and looking so gloomy? Oh, I, I have a hobby now. You see, Jane and I have an agreement not to have anything to do with the opposite sex. Well, I'm glad to hear it. So many men have said that to me. <laughs> oh, here, Irma, darling, this telegram came for you. Oh, let me see. Um, we'll be in New York tomorrow evening. Would like to see you, your old classmate from Minnesota, Bert Harris. Oh, good. Good old Bert. He was such a wonderful dancer. Gosh, I, I'd love to see him tomorrow night. But, Irma, what about your agreement with Jane? Oh, I can't help it. I'm starved for the company of a man. I'm tired of knitting. Wool is all right, but what good is it if you don't have a man around to pull it over your eyes? <laughs> well, what are you going to do, Irma? Well, I'm going to find...
find some way to get Bert up here without letting Jane know it. But well, Jane will know it's a man. After all, you'll have to introduce him and say this is Bert. Not necessarily. I may put a ribbon in his hair and say, Jane, this is Bertha. <laughs> Gosh, I hope he doesn't have a mustache. <laughs> Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, you have film on your teeth. And you need Pepsodent with Irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Pepsodent removes film, makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. So start now to fight film. Brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent the toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. Well, here I am at the beauty parlor feeling miserable. Why? Because I let Betty talk me into meeting Gordon McLean. Gee, I, I double-crossed Irma and I feel like a Benedict Arnold. I'm so nervous I can't even sit still for a manicure. Jane, if you don't keep your hands still, I won't be able to finish your manicure. Why are you so nervous? Oh, I've got myself in a fine mess. Irma and I agreed to substitute hobbies for men. And I have a fellow calling on me tonight. You're in a spot, Jane. But believe me, hobbies is nothing compared to fellas. I used to collect pictures of baseball players. But just to have one to bat you around is better than all the pictures in the world. <laughs> now, tell me, how are you going to fool him? Oh, well, I've already taken care of that. You see, when Mr. McLean comes over this evening, I'm going to introduce him as my hobby instructor. And we'll talk about uh, rocks or something. Uh, but uh, ain't you afraid that Irma will get wise? Oh, no, not Irma. She's so naive. And uh, I wouldn't want her to lose faith in me, so please, Hilda, don't mention this to anyone. Look, Jane, I take an oath. I should drop dead or remain an old maid. I'll give you your choice. Jane, believe me, as sure as my name's Hilda Mason, I won't breathe a word of it to anybody. Goodbye. Jane was just here. She was? Oh, the poor thing. Oh, Hilda, I feel so guilty. Would you please give me a mud pack? I can't look myself in the face. <laughs> All right, honey, sit down. Tell me what happened. Well, Jane and I made a pact that we were that we were through with fellas, you see, and we were gonna take up hobbies. But who do you think's in town? Who? Bert Harris, my school day sweetheart. He wants me to, or he wants to come up tonight and see me. Well, uh, what are you worried about, dear? Well, I, I, I don't want to hurt Jane's feelings. She, she has such faith in me, and I don't know how to explain. Well, uh, why don't you just introduce Bert as your hobby instructor? Do you think it'll work? Well, I understand it's being done a great deal these days. <laughs> well, now, it does sound original. That's what I'm going to do. I'll tell Jane I'm going to take up painting, and that Bert is a personal friend of Rembrandt. Come in. It's only me again, Janie. You sent for me? Yes, Professor. I thought perhaps you might be able to help me out. I need some stones and rocks. Stones and rocks? Janie, darling, you don't have to become violent. <laughs> when Mrs. O'Reilly comes for the rent, just tell her you haven't got it. <laughs> Professor, be serious. I need some stones in connection with my new hobby. Uh-huh. Janie, I'll be glad to help you. I'll go get the rocks. Well, where will you find them? I'm sure there must be a couple in my mattress. <laughs> Goodbye. Now, 
Where's that book of knowledge? Oh, um, rocks are a solid formation of inorganic matter and are to be found... Oh, oh, hello, Jane. Oh, hello, Irma. My, you, uh, you, you look pretty. Uh, you, you, you look pretty, too. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Isn't it funny how we... Got dressed up for our hobbies? <laughs> yes. Yes, it, it, it is funny. Uh, uh, well, uh, what else is new? Uh, nothing, nothing. Um, what's, uh, what's new with you? Uh, uh, nothing. Well, that's, that's nice. Uh... Fiddle dee. <laughs> yes, 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 indeed. Fiddle dee. -dee. I, I can't get over it. Here it is Saturday night, and normally both of us would be breaking our necks to get a date. Yes, <laughs> yes, that that's true. Aren't you glad we're not normal? <laughs> yes, yes, Irma. Uh, uh, by the way, Irma, did, um, did you hear that I gave up knitting? You did? Yes, yes. I, I, uh, I have a new hobby. Rocks. <laughs> oh, what a coincidence. Uh, I have found a new hobby, too. I'm uh, ta taking up painting. Painting? Oh, well, that's wonderful, Irma. And say, I have a great idea. Since you're interested in painting, why don't you go over to Central Park and study the view? You don't have to come home until, oh, well, after midnight. Uh, well, um, I was thinking since you're interested in rocks, why don't you go out now and find some? <laughs> well, no, Irma, no, I, uh, I want to stay in tonight. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> oh. Fiddle-dee-dee. <laughs> Double in spades. Uh, by the way, Irma, you have no idea how intensely interested I am in my new hobby. And just for uh, um, scientific purposes, I'm having a... a man come over tonight who knows all about rocks. A convict? <laughs> He's my instructor. Well, I hope he gets along with my instructor. Your instructor? Uh, yes, I'm having a man over who knows all about painting. Uh, I think he's going to bring his brush and weasel. <laughs> well, how, uh, how nice. Jane, this, uh, this doesn't in any way break our agreement, uh, does it? Why, of course not. Uh, Jane, uh, <clears throat> is my lipstick on straight? Uh, not that I think of Bert as a man, but you know artists are interested in paint. Oh, yes, I understand, dear. <laughs> is, uh, is my dress on straight? Uh, not that I think of Gordon as a man, but it's just that in his line of work, they're interested in, uh, formations. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, um, uh, come in. Good evening, Jane. Oh, hello, Gordon. I will come in. Uh, this is my roommate, Irma Peterson. Irma, this is my instructor, Mr. McLean. How do you do? Oh, pleased to meet you. I'm sorry I didn't know you were coming. I would have bought some rock candy. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Uh, the, well, uh, Irma knows all about your hobby. Uh, my hobby? Yes. Rocks. 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 Oh, 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 to be sure, rocks. Yes, 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 indeed. Rocks, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, that must be my instructor, Mr. Harris. Uh, come in. Well, here I am. <laughs> Bert, what have you got there? It's an oar. An oar? I couldn't bring a canoe, and you said on the phone that I was to pretend I was your hobby instructor. But you were supposed to say your hobby was painting. Painting? We must have had a bad connection. I thought you said punting. <laughs> oh, Irma! <laughs> Jane, now you know the truth, and I, I didn't want to hurt you. I, I didn't mean to break our pact, but 
I was so lonesome for a man, I was willing to take anything. <laughs> Thanks, Irma. You're just as sweet as you were in school. Are you angry, Jane? Why, of course not, honey. I'm just as guilty as you are. Gordon here isn't my hobby instructor, are you? Me? Well, the only rocks I ever had were in rock and rye. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here I was so worried. Now we all know we're fellows and girls, and we don't have to be ashamed of it. <laughs> right, Jane? Right, honey. There's no hobby that'll take the place of boy meets girl. Well, come on, let's roll up the rugs and dance. Now huh? you're talking. Gee, I wish I had my SX-42 here. We could get that hot band in Honolulu. Hey, you a shortwave ham? Certainly. I'm SQR 420. 420? I'm 426. No kidding. No kidding. Uh, fellas, help me with this rug, uh, will uh, wait you? Wait a minute. Gordon, I, I notice you come in strong. You you got a power booster? Will someone well, sure, take the I end of this Davenport? I got a booster. It's over at the hotel. That's uh, my hobby. Well, it's mine, too. Gee, I'd love to see your outfit. Best rig in the world. Come on. Let's go. Uh, say, sure, wait. Uh, wait, fellas. Wait, fellas. Fellas. <laughs> any wool left? <laughs> yes, honey. Knit one. Pearl one. Knit one. Pearl one. Drop one. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Nearly everyone has it. Just run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, that's film. And you'd better get Pepsodent toothpaste to remove it. For film collects stains that make teeth look dull. It harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid that many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. And remember, film never stops forming. No, it never lets up. So brush your teeth twice a day with film-removing Pepsodent. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. No other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. Get Pepsodent toothpaste with irium today. Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard and stars Marie Wilson as Irma, with Joan Banks as Jane. Mark Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it is brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Arium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried is Professor Kropotkin. Gloria Gordon was heard as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Blood Gluskin. This is Wendell Niles speaking. B-R-I-S-K, brisk flavor. That's what you get in Lipton tea. Yes, brisk flavor that picks you up, brings you back alive in a hurry. Brisk flavor that comes from Lipton's very special blending of the finest orange pico and pico teas. Try it. You'll find that this brisk flavor of Lipton's leaves you refreshed and ready to go again. And you can enjoy it often, because even wonderful tea like Lipton's costs less than any drink except water. Always ask for Lipton tea, the brisk tea, with that heartwarming Lipton lift. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsi and Show, My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.